my sweet day. Two teachers, a theatre and an actress. Hi. This should be a recipe for a creative afternoon. Hi. Hi. I'm, nice to meet you. I'm Elizabeth, nice to meet you. Hi, and thank you so much for coming in. It's all right. And uh, welcome to Polka Theatre. They'll be treading the boards at the theatre to find out how drama can work across their curriculum. My name's Elizabeth Carter and I've been teaching at South Farnham Junior School in Surrey for three years where I teach in Year 6. I'm Neris Samuel and I teach Year 5 at South Farnham Junior School in Surrey. I think all teachers are natural performers, to be honest, because you have to be if you want to stand up in front of a group of children and inspire them. I haven't personally got into role myself in front of the children. It'd be good today, actually, to think about what I actually do and whether someone who's got that dramatic background behind them would say, yeah, that's a, re that's a really good way of working with the children. The teaching role is perhaps one of the more complicated techniques, um, but I put it at the beginning because I would often approach a workshop by thinking, first of all, about the teacher in role, um, partly because I actually think it's more interesting planning around a character. My name is Sarah Armisen, all right? I'm a housemaid in one of the big houses down the road. And I was asked to train you up in uh, so that you can be servants, you can go into service. You ready to be trained? Absolutely. <laughs> yes? Have you got any experience? Well, I'm very sorry, but you're going to have to, my love, because if not, you're going to be in the workhouse for the rest of your life. It's a little bit like writing a, a mini play, I suppose, um, but including lots of activities within that, which the children can um, either show what they already know about the topic or learn a bit more about the topic. Hello, then. Why are you in the workhouse? Oh. My mum died giving birth to me, and my dad had run away, so I was just found in the workhouse, like Oliver Twist. Really? Oh, and what do they make you do every day? Um, well, they make me scrub the floors, scrub and floors. Um, I'm not allowed to see my brothers and my sisters because they're in a different part of the workhouse. I mean, that's one way of doing it, the sort of training, training them up to do something. Another way would be a sort of investigative, you know, information gathering um, style of role play. So you could be, say, a journalist. What Anna was able to do, which I think teachers, some teachers would find harder, is the staying in the role and the complete, um, you know, inside yourself believing that you are that character. I think the main thing is just not to worry about it. I think, I think kids are in role all the time anyway and they'll quickly get very used to, to the idea of their teacher doing it as well. What would happen if either of you became ill? Well, who would look after you in that situation? Well, that doesn't exist, illness. You can't be ill. You've just got to carry on. I get very ill. What do you get? I get mumps. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many opportunities I can think now about doing it um, that, that would really work. I think initially <laughs> there will be lots of giggling from my children because, you know, they're not used to me doing it. But I think... Um, if I stay in that role and if I'm really committed to it, I think they'd really enjoy it and actually get an awful lot out of it in terms of um, their own understanding of the character or the period or anything like that. So I'm going to give it a go. How will this work with the 34 children in Elizabeth's class? What we're going to, we're going to carry on with doing some literacy this morning, but before I get started, I need to go and um, just have a quick word with Mrs Moore. Time for my quick costume change. I just think that, I don't know if they're just going to laugh. That's what I think is going to happen. Right. <laughs> Guys, OK, seriously, we haven't got long. OK. <laughs> OK. Right. I was told I'd find you here. I've just seen your teacher on the way out, OK? I don't know how long we've got. Right. We have been studying the poem McCavity, and Nick McIntyre came in. Well, our teacher went out, and then um, this press agent guy came in. When I first came in, they were going to laugh, but I think the way you need to deal with that possibly is just to throw yourself even more into the character. So everyone just get up for me. Right. If at any point you hear the words, they're coming, that is your signal to get down and get silent. So just have a conversation with your partner. Okay. They're coming! <laughs> it was really quite intense for, for me as a teacher because you have to stay in role the whole time. And I did feel I'd sort of switch between Del Boy and uh, Dick Van Dyke at points. But it was, um, it was actually really enjoyable. Do you think our teacher would mind if we borrowed her necklace? No, I think she'd be all right with that as long as she put it back at the end of the lesson. So another method which I find works really well is to send the children on a sort of quest um, where they meet 
different relevant characters along the way. The quest is a good way in for people who aren't used to acting in role because you only have those short snippets of being that character. You're going to have to tell me of five inventions during the Victorian era. <gasps> yes. Mobile phones. Not quite. The telephone though. The telephone, not mobiles, but telephones. She did a, a fantastic bit of role play as Florence Nightingale, but you know, with her own voice, but very calm and completely believable. And, and she immediately took on a different energy, energy from her own, which is part of it. And I think that comes with character as well. I think the quest actually really struck me as a favourite. I thought it was a really excellent strategy. It wasn't sugar. <laughs> well, I think that's the one that struck me the most and I'm most looking forward to using. I felt a bit surprised when she started dressing up as different people. For this quest, you're going to meet three important people in history. And the first person that you're going to meet is a gentleman called Henry VIII. I was surprised because when the first um, people came up, I was like, what's he doing? And then suddenly he gave the robe to Miss Samuel and she put it on. I was like, what's she doing? Now then, I hear that you are wanting to be one of my courtiers. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Your Majesty, you would address me. Is that correct? Yes, Your Majesty. She was dressing up. As Henry VIII, a sailor, and Elizabeth. And she gave us three tasks to do, and she told us if we had completed them or not. I don't want to do this business anymore, so I need your help. I need you to put together a list of reasons why I shouldn't be a sailor anymore. I like the, the accent for the sailor a lot, because it was funny, and also with the other ones, really tough and rough voice. Sit up straight when you're in the presence of a queen. My goodness me, the manners in this room. So we're going to create the sound of the Victorian kitchen. And when I do that, I'm going to ask you to get louder. And when I do that, I'm going to ask you to get a bit quieter. By creating the soundscape, you're getting information about the world that these people lived in. And giving them a step before they're actually performing or having to create a scene or having to report or um, describe how something works. You know, they're doing a very simple step beforehand, which is just sitting down and using their ears to imagine, to listen and to imagine what those sounds would be. We're going to make the noise of the, the Victorian kitchen with the sound <coughs> of the street noises outside as well. So after three, one, two, Three. Oh, I mean, I can't believe how much work I've got extra, to do. Get me, get me that uh, rolling pin and bring me some news head. Lines. Right, come on, girls, we're going to get going. Right, get up the stairs and get the masters to go. Paper and bring it back down. I would normally do this um, by sitting them all down in a circle. Yeah. And uh, you'd go, um, you'd be inside the circle and you would, you know, conduct them, basically. Mm. Literally mm. conduct them like an orchestra. I think it would be better if, um, <clears throat> if you've got, like, four children doing like the cook, because mm. then they've got others to feed off. We were doing history, look at this picture, by um, William Thrift, and um, it's called the Railway Station. Um, we were in groups and we were kind of trying to get the atmosphere and the kind of noises of what would be, what it would be like at the station, at Paddington Station. You could hear everyone else as well and it was just like as if you were there because it was really good it kind of fun way of get, getting across what it would be like i'm so surprised how well it worked that soundscape was brilliant they were absolutely in on that and i thought i was going to have to actually give them more because i didn't think they'd come up with their own sounds but they'd come up with scenarios they'd got parts they were acting it out and they i think they really got involved in that so what we're going to do is we're going to try and create one of these objects in the Victorian kitchen, but using our bodies. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. Yeah? All right, so I thought we'd start off by creating the thing that we cook on. I think all these exercises, the more detail that you can add into them, the more effective they are. I think that's, that's the beauty of them, is to really be quite detailed. And we're going to have a pot hanging from the hook, so do you want to, do you want to be a pot? <laughs> That works really well, particularly if you've got something that is in motion mm. right. anyway, like something electrical. Maybe make a class 
freeze frame where they're all doing those different activities. You could either make it a really big object that you could get all the class doing, yes, because so, you've obviously got mm. about 30 children, or you yeah. could have them in twos or threes or fours making doing up different... their own, so you make up a whole scene rather than just Exactly, yes, one a object. whole kitchen scene, and they can each be, they can pick their own object from yeah. the kitchen. So, what can Elizabeth sculpt with her pupils' bodies? Right, what did a train have? We had to remember all the different parts that would be on a steam train, like the buffer, the wheels, the funnel, and the engine. We're trying to make it look as much like a train as possible and make the noises that the different parts would make. Um, with our bodies, it was quite good because it was in really enjoyable to do and it was also kind of telling you about like the model of how the train would be. And so that was good because then you could also think about what it would be like to be on the train and where everything would be, and it's good. Hey, brilliant, guys, that was excellent. You know, they thought really carefully about what they wanted to make and how they were going to use their bodies. And actually, we had four different interpretations of the same task, which I was really, really impressed with. So being slightly, not sceptical this morning, but just I was a bit like, is it going to work with 34 children in my classroom, are they going to do it? And being year six as well, who can be a little bit role-playing, oh, we're not going to do that. I thought that went really well. Anna has some feedback for Elizabeth and Neris. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. Yours was just great. They, I, enjoyed they just... I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, because I'd never done acting teacher in role before. But no, I actually really enjoyed that. I'll definitely be doing that again. Anna, your majesty. Your majesty. I loved Queen Elizabeth and I just, she was so, she was so bossy, and it, <laughs> but you can be bossy when you're in character, it's just yes, amazing because yes, they do love so it. much more with and it. And I love yes. the fact that you made them turn around and curtsy to you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I stopped looking at it there and it was completely recognisably a train coming into a station. And they, it really did when you were sort of hearing all the sounds because I had a little group over there who were the, the driver and like, oh, they, as they built up, all aboard, last train, last train. We had the porters and then I had some street sellers and so on. So one of them said, we were doing learning but it was different. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, it was different. The history that I did was different than uh, what we normally, you know, how you normally perhaps deliver a history lesson and that they'd really liked doing it. Some of the stuff I did in the history this morning, if I then asked them to go away and write something about a Victorian station, the quality and the depth of their knowledge of their surroundings and what mm. it would have been like would have been much mm. more detailed. And, you know, across the board from my more able children to my less mm. able would really have been set up with the ideas about what to write. Mm. Teachers are wonderful sceptics. You show them something and they're like, well, I can't do that with my class because. And I think what I've realised today is that worked brilliantly with my class. They loved it, the children were engaged by it, and they had a really thoroughly enjoyable morning where actually the learning was embedded within them to a deeper extent than had I taught it how I was going to. It was lovely to have some new creative ideas. You could apply the strategies that we did to most lessons, most curriculum areas, which is really good. So now when I come to approach a lesson, I'll be thinking about how I can put in those techniques.